This is the Northwest Tank Line Super Bowl show coming to you from Radio Row, Mandalay Bay, Las Vegas, Super Bowl 58. The Chiefs and the 49ers, our 23rd appearance at Radio Row. We keep on rocking and rolling and, of course, bringing you all the content that you desire. And our next guest is a member of the Green Bay Packers, a team that we're going to get into it. They could easily be here. Mm-hmm. He is one of their offensive linemen tackle. John Runyon Jr. stops by. John, thanks for making time to visit us here. Definitely. Thanks for having me. I always talk about football being a small world, right? I always say it's always one degree of separation, even up in Canada and looking down on the States. And I was looking at you being a Michigan guy. And Shea Patterson, we had I do the play-by-play for the CFL team in Vancouver with the BC Lions. Oh, yeah. And we had Shea in camp. He was your quarterback he was. at Michigan. And yeah. now he's in Saskatchewan. And it's funny. they got a veteran there by the name of Trevor Harris. But everyone I talk to in Saskatchewan, I keep hearing, got to give Shea Patterson a chance. Got to give Shea Patterson a chance. Definitely. Right. Yeah, uh, Shea was a phenomenal quarterback when uh, he was at Michigan with me, and uh, yeah, uh, I heard he's been you know doing his thing over there in the Canadian yeah. Football League, and it's fun seeing him still playing and enjoying it. So tell us a little bit about one year here representing one on Radio Road. How much fun are you having? Having a great time, you know, being here in Las Vegas, uh, doing these interviews, you know, putting myself out there, been having a great time. Uh, it's like my third time in Las Vegas, and. Uh, Unbelievable. I've never done anything like this before, so bouncing around here, seeing what everything's about, it's been really fun so well, far. I'll tell you what, you know what's more fun? Being in lockdown at a hotel. Yeah, being I'm, in this I'm game. sure that definitely is. You know, I've, I've always said this, um, and, you know, talking to players and coaches, a lot of them agreed with me over the years. This is probably the toughest part, isn't it? Because of the fact that you're thinking that should be us, that should be us. Yeah. And then once the Super Bowl's over or the, whatever championship, Everyone's kind of on equal footing again, right? Yeah. And you just kind of move forward. But this is probably the toughest stretch, is it not? Definitely, yeah. Because uh, I felt like we were so close, um, you know, our divisional game against the 49ers. I felt like we were kind of winning the game for, you know, three and a half quarters. And uh, I felt like kind of when we needed it most, we weren't able to get it. And 49ers go down and score. And we had an opportunity at the end to, you know, potentially tie the game or, you know, take, take a lead and win it. But that doesn't really happen, and then you kind of see how the 49ers go. And, you know, they pulled off a great win against the Lions, but I felt like we could have given ourselves an opportunity to go, you know, into Detroit for the NFC Championship and uh, potentially play and be in the Super Bowl. But, you know, that's how the NFL works. These margins are so yeah. close. Or there's a lot of ifs. There's a lot of what. Like, there's a lot of what could have happened. And never know. But, you know, that's how the things work out. You know, when you look at how everything kind of transpired and how close you guys were, I'm just thinking to myself – Man, um, it, it could have been there. Yet at the same time, you look at the, the season that you had, particularly the second half. Yeah. You got your offensive line together. You got healthy. You got your running back, Jones, healthy. And you guys, Jordan Love, you know, he, he obviously felt a lot more comfortable with the old line being intact. You guys just took off. You got to feel so good about that moving forward. Definitely. Uh, second half of the season felt like it was completely different from, you know, what we were kind of doing the first half. At one point in the season, we were 2-5. and five, uh not really knowing what direction the season was going to go. And we, we kind of knew that there was going to be some time, some bumps in the road, you know, on the way to us being the team that we kind of envisioned. And we kind of knew that, but, you know, we were kind of getting impatient. We are like, okay, when is this going to happen? Is it going to happen? And uh, we had a very, you know, veteran group, especially on defense and on the offensive side. We have a pretty veteran offensive line. And, you know, Jordan's first-year starter, but he was in his fourth year in the NFL. He's prepared. Uh, running backs, uh, Aaron Jones, A.J. Dillon. You know, besides that, you know, we got really young receivers and young tight end. So a lot of talent everywhere. We just had to make sure that it caught up and it started meshing. And I think everybody saw the product of that second half of the season when these games kind of just felt easy. Everybody was having fun, um, kind of knew going into the game we are going to win. And, uh, that's what, and I'm excited to see, you know, where this goes in the future because – Jordan having that his first year starting, I don't think many other quarterbacks have a you know, first year starting like that, and um, really excited for you know what the future holds for him and for the rest of the Packers. John Runyon well. Jr. is our guest, uh, offensive lineman with the Green Bay Packers. Tell us a little bit about Jordan Love. Tell me something that well, tell us something that we don't know. <sighs> tell you something you don't know about Jordan. Uh, Jordan is a pretty quiet guy. Uh, he likes to stay out the way a lot. Um, uh, every time we're going. Like we have O-line dinners on Thursday. He's uh, he's always ordering a spotted cow. He, he loves drinking a spotted cow beer, and I know I know <laughs> people in Wisconsin will be really proud of him for that. So, 
you know, I'm going to give him a little bump and, you know, put him that out there. He always appreciates the spotted cow. Hey, it's, does he give the old line a lot of love? Like he's taking care of you guys, like buying you dinners? You know, some of these guys, they buy watches, boots, whatever, right? Yeah, uh, he's always taking care of us, uh, you know, whether that is, you know, buying us dinner or whatever. And we always make sure we're heard, you know, as an offense. And, you know, that goes up the ladder. And uh, Jordan's always looking out for his guys and, you know, making sure that us, because, you know, we protect him the end of the day. I'm sure he wants to be on the good terms with us. So he's always taking care of us. John Runyon Jr. is our guest, Green Bay Packers offensive lineman. A um, couple more things before we start talking a little bit about your story. But the one thing that impressed me the most in that game against San Francisco, even though you lost, was how you guys reset because, man, doing what you did to Dallas, you must have come on you know, such an emotional high. And you know what it's like. It's like, hey, enjoy it for a night, whatever. The next day it's back to business. Yep. And the fact that you guys were able to reset and refocus and, you know, take the 49ers almost to the mat told me a lot about your team and your ability and the, kind of like that pedigree that you have moving forward, that culture. Yeah, I mean, we knew going in that 49ers game, you know, whatever we did last week against the Dallas wasn't going to help us beat one of the best teams in the NFL. Like, we're going to have to put in just the same amount of work we did against, you know, the Cowboys that, and potentially even more to uh, play against this 49ers team. And uh, it was a it was a back-and-forth battle, you know, the whole the whole game. I felt like we kind of had the edge for most of it, but it kind of always felt like it was going to – you knew it was going to come down to a play here and there. And you know, that's, what it had, that's what it was. And 49ers had a great drive on offense right when they needed it, and they drove down the field, capped it off with – that McCaffrey touchdown, and we had a chance at the end as well. Uh, we had about one, two timeouts to get down there, and, you know, that's the way it goes in the NFL. These games always come down to that last two-minute drive, and that's what makes it so exciting. Hey, you talk about, in, you know, fortitude and, and having that reset and the ability to refocus and go do your thing. Man, I think about you being the son of, a, you know, John Runyon, guy who's in the, in the NFL, Pro Bowler, you name it, yeah. Eagles Hall of Fame. And I know a lot of kids that the, their dads are famous athletes. And it's tough. It's not easy, man, because everybody expects you to do the same that your dad did. What was that pressure like growing up? Definitely. I, I definitely would say it was difficult, um, especially growing up and playing high school football kind of in the same, like, you know, Philadelphia area as him. Uh, people expect a lot of things out of you. They expect you to be this kind of – pro bowl all pro player at the high school level that my dad was but i'm not like i've kind of always grew up i am my own person and um i feel like people kind of seeing the effects of that today uh with i mean i'm not comparing me and my father to lebron james but lebron james and his son at uh usc and people are kind of feel like they're uh projecting these like assumptions that they put on Bronny, and uh you know, there's just unrealistic. Like, he is his own player. Yeah. I am my own player. And it's difficult. But, you know, once you're able to, to live with that, because I kind of dealt with it for a, a long time. But at the end of the day, it doesn't mean anything. And, you know, I chose going to the same college that he went to, University of Michigan. And I kind of just at that point accepted it. Um, kind of walking by his All-American picture on the hallway every single day at Michigan. And you kind of feel the, the pressure. It was a kind of a reminder, but it was a good reminder because – Kind of drives you, right? Yeah, because yeah. people have a lot of expectations for me, but I have a lot more expectations for myself. So it kind of drove me to be my own person, but, you know, be better in some places as well. You know, it's interesting reading some, some stories and doing some research on you and your dad, and it, it doesn't seem like – from what I've read, it didn't seem like he was that overbearing guy. and like It wasn't the Todd Marinovich, Marv Marinovich scenario where, you know, he's just trying to make his kid into a football player. Yeah. Yet at the same time, <laughs> I read that. I love that one thing where you, I guess you picked up an opponent or patted him on the butt or something, and your dad's like, yeah, we don't do that. Oh, yeah, yeah. I remember that. That was in uh, – I don't know where he found that, but I remember that was specifically that was like in eighth grade. And uh, I just – eighth grade was really my first year playing tackle football because my township did it by weight, and I was always – bigger and I'd be having to play with kids that were two years older than me so uh, I remember my first time playing football in eighth grade still trying to figure out my body really and I'm over there helping kids off the ground uh, patting, them on the, patting them on the butt and I remember first thing like right when we get in the car like I had a good game but uh, first thing you do when I get in the car like I was expecting my dad to be like good job like you scored a touchdown today and you know the first thing you said was that's that's not how you play football that's that's not the kind of edge that's not the kind of player you want to be and you know I understand. I was like, wow, this is, you know, different. And uh, that kind of changed my mindset, kind of changed, you know, the way I looked at the game. And we're out there to have fun, you know, be nice. But, you know, when you're on that field, it's different. It's a different kind of mode you have yeah. to be in. And 
that's how he played and that's what he taught me and like you said he never really was that overbearing uh, person he always wanted me to do what I wanted to do and he's always there along the way to help me and you know the other thing too with offensive linemen I think it's it's a much more cerebral position than your counterparts on the defensive line yeah. I mean the defensive line I think it's just so much about being aggressive I mean offensive line it's there's a lot of thinking going on it's rather a more controlled aggression does that make sense definitely I'd say offensive line play is more sort of like a dance it's very very coordinated very planned uh everything kind of has to fall within the timing of everything yeah. where you're you're uh you're timed up with the quarterback the running back the tight ends you're timed up with everybody as opposed to defense alignment like defense line and defense in general like you're playing instinctually you're firing off the ball you're playing your assignment on that play but you're reacting mainly on offense you kind of have to think like okay this is my job but if this happens i got to change and do this and if this could happen as well then i got to redirect and go this way so there's a lot more thinking definitely on the offensive side all right before we let you go um the one question i like to ask our ask our guests is not necessarily who wins or a pick i don't want to put you on the spot that way but you probably have some questions going in this game some of the things you're kind of going hmm Wonder what's going to happen there. What are some of the things you're looking at in this game and wondering how they play out? Yeah, um, I've been looking at it kind of just the trajectory of the two seasons. I feel like they're kind of polar opposites. Uh, 49ers, I feel like they started off, you know, had a really good regular season. And, you know, they kept, they maintained that. And they ended the season, you know, obviously the, the number one seed in the NFC. And uh, the way they played in the playoffs, you know, they, they played us, they played at the Lions. They kind of looked, you know, kind of wishy-washy. Who, who knows what to expect? But uh, this is the Super Bowl, and uh, 49ers, kinda, they're kind of up and down. the whole. I mean, sorry, the Chiefs, the whole season they're up and down. Don't know what's happening, but kind of these playoff games, it feels like they've been firing all cylinders. They feel confident, and, you know, I, I don't want to, you know, make a pick, throw anybody under the bus. But uh, I, think, I think both teams are going to be ready at the end of the day, and, it's going to be exciting because two – I mean, both teams have great players on both sides of the ball. There's no real weaknesses. Hey, before I let you go, um, there's a Green Bay Packer fan at Vancouver, absolutely huge fan. His name's Brock Besser. He's with the Vancouver Canucks, all-star, 30 goals plus already. Loves the Packers. That's his team, yeah. right? So, if he ever gets to Green Bay, you can handle tickets for him or whatever. Like, you know, we can work something out Definitely, there. Definitely, yeah. If Brock lets me know, I'll be, I'll be happy to help him. There you go, because yeah. he loves his Packers. And he was, so awesome. dis you know, he was so disappointed when you guys lost to Sam Brown. Yeah. I remember talking to him in the dressing room. But he's the guy that runs a fantasy football team for all the guys yeah. and all that. So, uh, anyway, uh, great having you on board, John. Uh, great success with the Packers. Keep it going. And I look forward to keeping track on it. And who knows, maybe next year we got you at the Riser or at Media Night on Monday night instead of Radio Row. Yeah, you know, we'll see you there. Thanks, Appreciate John. Thank you for having me. Thank no you. worries.